everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We've got a bevy of news stories for you today, ranging from uh, exciting sales data on Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Oh, and don't forget, an amazing eShop sale happening right now with games like up to 75, 80% off. It's insane. We're going to get into that uh, towards the end of the video. And hey, if this is your first time watching a Nintendo Prime video, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like and maybe hit that subscribe button. And you know what? Why don't you hit that bell as well so you get notified of all future videos that we upload, including our big show this summer known as Prime. Gaming Fest, we're gonna have thousands of dollars worth of gaming gear giveaways from consoles and games and art pieces and accessories. And we're trying to give back as much as we can. We actually did this last summer as well and had over 350 people walk away with something absolutely for free. So hey, why not hit that subscribe button and get that bell hit so you can be notified when we are going to be going live with that event. It does happen in June. Now, setting all that aside, let's get right into today's news. And we're starting with Kirby and the Forgotten Land. So we now have sales updates for the UK for its second week on the market and Kirby has done something a little bit unprecedented for the Kirby franchise and that is maintain its position as the number one bestseller in boxed retail units for the week. This is important to note because the UK does not count digital sales in their sales charts. So yes, Kirby and the Forgotten Land stayed at number one for two weeks in a row and that officially makes it the fourth best-selling Kirby game of all time in the UK already after just two Two weeks, which is incredible. Last week's number two game, uh, Tiny's Tiny, Tina's Tiny Wonderland, uh, that one actually fell back a little bit to number four. Hopping back up into number two is Elden Ring. At number three, we actually get to see Pokemon Legends Arceus make a return to the top three as well. Now, while not in the top 10, Breath of the Wild sales actually jumped 60% week over week. Uh, really incredible, showing that Kirby might have actually sold some Switches last week, and now, you know, they're starting to pick up some of those secondary games like Legends Arceus and Breath of the Wild. Uh, yeah, now if you're curious on how much the sales actually fell for Kirby week over week, because obviously it didn't sell as well as it did during launch week, it actually fell 41%, and the fact that it fell 41% and still maintained its number one position on the charts is incredible. It actually shows just how well those launch sales really were for Kirby. Now, can it maintain its spot for three weeks in a row? That would actually set a Kirby game record if it does that, so well, I guess we'll find out next weekend. Next up, we actually have an interview in Nick Kay for the producer of the Mario Kart series. Uh, and he goes in depth on the DLC, the 48 tracks being added to this uh, you know, game over the next you know, handful of years or next couple of years, I suppose. And we already have you know, eight of those tracks ready right now, two new cups. And there's been some likes and dislikes with these cups, some liking the way it was handled, some disliking it, whether it's a visual thing, whether it's the coconut mall with the cars not moving and the escalators being changed or you know, just things like even the tour tracks actually showing some slight improvements over their original iterations on mobile devices. So what does he have to say about all this and why did they go in the direction that they did? Well, here is what he had to say. So this comes from producer Yosuke Yabuki and he said the following, the word remaster might sound cheap, but we're confident that it will create new and unique experiences that are different to how tracks were originally. We had to make all sorts of adjustments as it wasn't enough to simply leave the tracks as they were. The Game Boy Advance track Sky Garden released in 2001 was originally a flat plane, but we added some verticality to the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe version. Players are going to have their own memories with each course. So we are careful to not change them too much. The discussion of intellectual property often happens around characters, but courses also belong in that conversation. We want to honor players' memories while also polishing the allure of each course as intellectual property. So this also shows that they wanted to put a lot of love and care into these courses without fundamentally changing people's, how, how we remember them, how these courses were back in the day. Obviously ones that were completely flat planes like back on the Super Nintendo are going to need to be adjusted to have verticality, but the bottom line is, you know, there's a lot of ins and outs with these courses and what's the the right move, what's the not the right move. Some people think they should do more like they did with the original Mario Kart 8 courses and the original Mario Kart 8 DLC. Some people think they should maybe do a bit less because it's kind of bastardization their, you know, memories like Coconut Mall where the cars don't move and they change the escalators. Some people hate those changes. So it's a fine balance they're trying to find between trying to, you know, deal with nostalgia while also, you know, trying to make sure these courses are fresh and feeling good for new players today that maybe never played these courses originally. I don't 
you know, envy the team's you know, hard time having to find this balance. I can understand that you know, I don't work at Nintendo, I don't make video games right now, so there's a lot of things you need to consider when releasing DLC like this to both make it appealing, but also make sure that older fans aren't upset by it. I don't envy their position at all. Uh, they're gonna get criticism, they're gonna get praise. That just comes with the territory. And uh, I would say, at least for the first batch of eight courses they've released, they did an all right job. I'm not gonna say they're even among my favorite courses in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, although, you know, you know the, the Ninja Highway, Hideaway one's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that, you know, I'm hopeful that we're gonna see even better courses moving forward. And it could just have to do with the track selection this time. They might have went with the easiest tracks now. People always know you always get easier tracks in the first couple cups the best tracks in the last couple of cups so it could be possible that we're just looking at the easiest of the batch and then it's going to get more you know, complicated with better and more complex tracks moving forward i guess time will tell next up i wanted to let you guys know that nintendo has restocked classic controllers on their my nintendo store that you need a nintendo switch online subscription to purchase now this restock isn't unfortunately what we would like to see but it's better than nothing they have restocked the super nintendo controller and the sega genesis controller again meant to be used with nintendo switch online although it is just a standard controller for switch and could be cross compatible in various indie games and the like on the eShop. well one controller we're actually waiting to be restocked is the nintendo 64 controller they have actually never restocked the controller since launch. And since you could do pre-orders before it came out, technically it's never actually been available while the Nintendo 64 app was available, at least in the United States. Think about that for a moment. They let you pre-order it, and after the Nintendo 64 online launch, it's actually never been able to be purchased. So yeah, kind of a problem. So while I'm really happy the Super Nintendo and Genesis do have restocks and maybe they're banking up more and more N64 controllers for a better restock, here is the reality of the situation. These have been available now for a few days. They're still not sold out. The one that's in demand is the N64 one, and that's the one that's not being made available. I don't know if they're having a hard time manufacturing them. I don't know if there's just some issues somewhere. Maybe they're all stuck on a boat in the middle of the ocean waiting to be unpacked. I have no idea. All I know is it's disappointing, and I hope to see this resolved at some point in the future. Now, our last story deals with some sales on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Now, there's always thousands of games on sale on the eShop which is great, but also a problem because it makes it so hard to sift through them to find the best deals on the best games. So today I wanted to actually talk about a handful of these games and the great deals being happening to them so you don't miss out on them, including some sales that are ending soon and some sales that just started up. And we're starting with the Ultimate Sonic Bundle. So the Ultimate Sonic Bundle includes Sonic Mania, Sonic Forces, and Sonic Team Racing. And it's actually going for just $29.99, which is 50% off of retail. That is awesome. That is a great price. All three of those games are quality experiences. We're not talking about, you know, a, a certain Sonic game that was made by Big Red Button. We're actually talking about quality Sonic games here. Mania, widely considered the best of the bunch. But yeah, for $29.99, I think it's well worth diving in. If you have been considering buying these games and waiting on a sale, this is the time to get it. Now, another mega Sega deal is Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. It's on sale right now for just $14.99. So whether you've played played this franchise before or you're actually looking to get into it for your first time, it's 50% off. Great time to get into it. And the last deal from Sega I wanted to bring up was Valkyrie Chronicles 4 Complete Edition. We're going through the Complete Edition instead of the Standard Edition because the price difference is negligible. So you might as well get the version that has all the content. And that is just $19.99 or, you know what, $30 off of the normal launch price. So that is really great. All of these games are amazing and well worth looking into. Now getting into our first indie deal, we're looking at Overcooked 2. It is actually the cheapest it's ever been on Nintendo Switch at $6.25, which is 75% off the standard price. Overcooked is an amazing franchise. I've had a ton of fun with it and I cannot suggest this game enough if you have friends both online or in person. Next up, Axiom Verge, one of the best Metroidvania indie games on the planet, hits its lowest price ever at $5.99. That is 70% off of its standard pricing. Next up is a game for those people that love Breath of the Wild. If you are a massive Breath of the Wild fan and you haven't heard of this game, 
You've really been living under a rock. It's made by Ubisoft. We're, of course, talking about Immortals Phoenix Rising. It is on sale right now for $15.99. That's 75% off. And I cannot stress this enough. If you have not played this game, but you love Breath of the Wild, you are really missing out. This is a high-quality experience that's highly highly inspired by Breath of the Wild uh, with a lot more, you know, teenage level comedy or whatever, but it's a, it's good fun. And then next up is, you know, for you Potterheads out there, you Lego fans out there, the Lego Harry Potter collection is on sale right now for $9.99. That's 80% off of retail. Has a couple Harry Potter games included. The Lego franchise is obviously amazing. Uh, and then the last game I want to talk about is actually one that came out a few years ago, but is a triple A experience and one that everyone should play if you're into strategy. And that is Civilization V. It is on sale right now for $8.99. That is 70% off and my gosh is civilization 5 a lot of fun at least i bought it for full price at launch because my lord do i love civilization now before we end this video i just want to remind everyone that this tuesday we are actually going to be live streaming lego star wars Skywalker Saga. That's right, folks. The big, much-anticipated LEGO game, one of the most anticipated LEGO games to ever exist. Nine movies, one game, space combat. You have ground stuff. You got traveling between planets. You have story elements. All this crazy stuff wrapped into a single game. I am so excited to go from pod racing to Death Star destroying to whatever the hell happens in the final movie because I haven't actually seen it yet. This is really, really exciting stuff. And you know what? I saw this back in a private demo at E3 2019 and mwah, forget about the visuals. The gameplay was so stunning. And on Switch, it apparently runs at 720p locked 30 FPS. I like the locked 30 FPS because that means there shouldn't be any FPS drops. And that is more important to me than trying to target 60. Now, that being said, this game is coming out on Tuesday. We'll be live streaming in here. You guys don't have to go buy it or anything right now, but you know, check out our stream and you know, maybe during the stream you decide that this looks good enough to you and you want to pick it up or you want to pick it up on a different platform. That's totally fine. That's your prerogative. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime and you know what? I'm going to catch you guys in the next video.